thank you for the privilege to be here today and to provide this testimony. My name is Jerry Redman. I am the managing senior partner of Second Life with Chattanooga. We are a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to creating awareness, advocacy, and collaborative action on the issue of sex trafficking as it exists in Greater Chattanooga, Hamilton <coughs> County, and Southeast Tennessee. Well before we incorporated as an organization, those of us who founded Second Life, along with some other like-minded organizations and individuals, were, were working to coordinate recovery services for local trafficking victims. Over time, however, we recognized that our coordinated efforts were still not sufficient to meet all the needs of local and area sex trafficking victims. And so meeting those needs both sufficiently and effectively is why I'm here today. I want to make sure that we're clear about the issue that, to which I'm referring. So please allow me to offer this definition of trafficking. And this is according to the United States Department of Justice. Trafficking, sex trafficking constitutes the use of force, fraud, or coercion in order to induce someone to commit a commercial sex act. Now anytime that commercial sex act involves a minor, even if the minor says that they are providing that sex act willingly, it is automatically trafficking. The issue of human trafficking in all its forms is a pretty hot topic. I speak on a lot of college and university campuses, and this, this is the number one social justice issue for the so-called justice generation today. And the past decade has seen a recognition of the problem as a U.S. issue. Our, our recognition and understanding of it here in the States has grown. It has been found, sex trafficking has been found to be present in rural, suburban, and urban areas throughout our country. Tennessee is a leading state in both the recognition of the issue as well as our collaborative response to it. I make the statement a lot in my, in my speeches that we're not always known for being at the top of the right list sometimes in Tennessee. But in fact, we were in a meeting Friday with some leadership from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation who had just come back from a meeting in DC and senior leadership at the Department of Justice looked at them and said, Tennessee, in terms of its collaborative response to this issue, is an anomaly. We really don't see this in any other state, so that's, that's good news. In 2011, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the TBI, in conjunction with Vanderbilt University's Peabody College, released the first human trafficking study of its kind in the U.S. It's our understanding this is still the only study of its kind in the U.S. It's known as the Tennessee Human Sex Trafficking and its Impact on Children and Youth 2011 report. And it measured the problem of sex trafficking in our state on a county by county basis for the years 2009 and 2010. The results of this study found that 78 of the 95 Tennessee counties during the reporting period had at least one case of adult sex trafficking. This means that 85% of all Tennessee counties in that two-year period reported at least one case of an adult being sexually trafficked. The same study showed that 68 of the 95 Tennessee counties reported at least one case of a minor being trafficked for sex. So that means that 68% of all counties in Tennessee had occurrences of children being trafficked for sex during the 2009-2010 period. Hamilton County, was one of four Tennessee counties reporting over 100 cases of trafficking for the reporting period. In addition, over 25 cases of minors being trafficked in our county were reported as part of the, Tennessee, the TBI study. On Wednesday of last week, the TBI released a follow-up report to the 2011 study. This new study shows just how trafficking in our state is, is just as likely to be present in smaller populated rural areas as it is in larger population. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. On Wednesday of this past week, the TBI released its follow-up study to the 2011 report. It dealt with the fact that Trafficking is just as likely to happen in rural, less populated areas 
as in urban large population centers. However, no matter whether the, the population is in a rural setting, suburban setting, or urban setting, every area of our state is subject to the presence of trafficking. This new study also shows that while some complained that the 2011 study overinflated the number of reported trafficking cases, we are actually more likely to be underreporting the instances of trafficking in Tennessee. And before I close, I'll, I'll talk about the, the ongoing need for awareness and, awareness and education concerning this issue. Now, having referenced both the presence of trafficking in our state and immediate area, I want to turn now to what those who have been victimized by this crime need once they have been rescued from their traffickers. And quite frankly, what they need upon rescue is everything. And I realize I'm pointing out the obvious when I say this, but being trafficked is extremely hard on victims. Along with the sexual trauma forced on these individuals, they also experience sleep deprivation, beatings, forced tattooings or brandings so that the trafficker makes them understand you are my property. Certainly lack of proper nutrition, medical care, forced drug use, and terrible psychological scarring. If a trafficking victim is not rescued, the average lifespan of that victim from the time they are first trafficked has been found to be less than seven years. This means that once rescued, the list that services require in order to begin the process of recovery and building a new life for themselves is quite extensive. Those recovery services include trauma-informed mental health services, and quite frankly, this will be a long-term, if not lifelong, need for the recovered victim. Trauma-informed medical services, dental care, nutritional care, and instruction on how to create lifelong good nutritional habits, legal services. This is due to a number of things, including the fact that quite often, traffickers will put their victims in a place where the victim is actually the one that is often arrested. So they, they sometimes present with a record or with even pending charges. Addiction counseling. As I mentioned earlier, forced drug use is a part of what traffickers use, or you will find victims who have turned to drug use just to simply deal with the trauma that they're living through. Language skills. Although let me just add there, there one of the common misconceptions about who this victim is is that it is someone who's being brought in to our country from elsewhere. Studies have found the majority of, United, of victims trafficked in the U.S. are U.S. citizens. How to access government assistance services for which the, the, the survivor may qualify. Parenting classes. Many of these victims have kids. Quite often they are going to need help with child custody or just counseling about how to go, to go about reintegrating with their children. <clears throat> Educational services and placement, job skills training, job placement, and overall life skills training. And, and this includes, how do you budget? Several of us could probably sign up for that, that class. How do you maintain a home, a, a good, orderly, clean home? What does it mean to go get a driver's license? Or how do you go about filing one's income tax on time and correctly? Again, that's probably something we could all sign up for. Now, the delivery of what I just described has been found to be best accomplished in a long-term residential recovery setting. Best practice na practices nationally show that these recovery programs should be offered over an 18 to 24 month timeline with additional aftercare services of up to at least one year available for graduates of the recovery program. Unfortunately, the availability of such services in our nation is limited. The 2013 National Survey of Residential Programs for Victims of Sex Trafficking reports that currently there are 33 residentially based recovery programs in the United States for victims of sex trafficking, 33. These programs offer a total of 682 beds, 371 of which are in California alone. 
Currently, Tennessee does not have a residentially based long-term recovery program that is set up exclusively for survivors of sex trafficking. However, we at Second Life of Chattanooga are in the process of developing such a recovery center here in our area that will offer all of the services I have previously outlined. And this will be done in a residential setting. We are still a year, give or take, away from the center opening, but we are heavily involved daily in the due diligence necessary to bring this center online. Some of you might be asking, so what does this have to do with human rights? And that's where I'm going to close. Because my, my purpose coming here today with this information is to, to highlight these needs in our state and here in Chattanooga. And even though this is not in my notes, I will, I will add this. One of the great needs that we need, and this, and this dovetails into awareness and education, is to understand that these are our fellow citizens. These are our people, be they adult or be they children. If they're children, these are our children. And we have got to reframe the conversation to move, move it away from them, they, those people, when we refer to victims of this crime and instead be talking in terms of us, we, and our. We made a presentation to a group late last year, and one of the comments that got back to us from a, a member of the audience, uh, that they gave this comment to someone who was hosting the event. They said, well, I just don't know about all of this trafficking stuff. You know, sometimes people just get what they deserve. There is no one who deserves being raped 20 plus times a day. No one on the planet deserves that. Given the prevalence of trafficking in every section of our state, it is vital that every resource available be used to overcome the continued lack of awareness on the part of many in our state about trafficking and its presence in Tennessee. Tennessee is a leading state in terms of its collaborative approach to dealing with human trafficking we must strengthen. However, we must ask ourselves, what do we cost our society, not only economically, but also in terms of our own humanity, if we do not do everything that we can in order to give the survivors an opportunity to recover their own humanity and live the kind of lives each, is, each of us in this room, room hope to live for ourselves. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today and appear before you to speak not only about the problems that we're facing regarding this issue in our area and in our state, but also about the solutions that are available to us regarding this crime if we will act swiftly, efficiently, and collaboratively. Second Life of Chattanooga wishes to thank the Tennessee Human Rights Commission for holding these hearings across our state and for its commitment to the defense of human rights for all Tennesseans. Thank you very much. Any questions? Just, just one question. What are the sources of your income? Sir? What are the sources of your income? Sources of our income? First of all, not nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, are, we are a nonprofit organization, and so obviously we, we work off of donations uh, from private individuals as well as we are constantly seeking foundation money. Do the foundations in Chattanooga support you? We, we have, have, have had very good success with, with some of the foundations here locally. In fact, we as an organization are a bit of an anomaly because we, we have stronger support at this point at the foundation level than we do that individual donor base level. What about government? We actually have not sought any of that funding yet. We're not, we're not opposed to it. It's just based on where we are currently. We know we're not quite ready yet to seek some of those funding sources. We, we do intend, however, the Department of Justice does have a, a lot of money available for <coughs> this issue. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there any profile of what the trafficker would so the average citizen would know if they're looking for uh, somebody coming out of the house a lot or out going in there? Pro profile of a trafficking situation? Is that the question? The trafficker, the person that would be the um, the, the trafficker can often look like Hollywood has depicted him to look, but oftentimes the trafficker is her. And she can look like a soccer mom, 
or she can look like a high school senior, which that is the case of a young lady recently busted by Ed Stanton's U.S. Attorney's Office in Memphis. Um, they literally come in all shapes and sizes. The trafficker can oftentimes look like a parent because the instances of familial trafficking, unfortunately, are, happen far too often in our state. Um, they really come in all shapes, sizes, economic, uh, from, from economic strata, ethnicities. Uh, I wish there was a way we could target and say, yeah. boom, when you, when you see this, that's the like, we can't profile, unfortunately. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, in October 1, 2011, Tennessee established a statewide hotline specifically to this issue, and you can call it anonymously. Even if you, you think you see something that's just a little off, they want you to call 855-558-6484. Thank you.